In the previous video, I went into detail about the custom lineage race as well as described the artificer class. You will find a link to that video in the description below, as well as links to the additional videos that make up this series. In this video, I will be creating a character using the new custom lineage option and setting it up to work with the artificer class provided by Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. So with that, let's begin the process. The first thing that you will want to do is make sure that you are going to open up your character wizard. And that is available through the PCs button here. And right down here, you'll see this little star icon. You just click that and it will pop this up. Right off the bat, we see that there under the race tab here, we have the custom lineage option showing up here at the bottom. You'll want to click that first. And what this does is it sets up a series of requirements that we will need to select in order to be able to move on. In this particular case, I'm planning on creating a medium sized character who happens to have dark vision of up to 60 feet. So you can see that I have selected a sense there. And that is part of the variable trait feature. It's going to be an intelligence improvement in this case so that when I get to the stats for this particular character, my intelligence stat will be increased by two points. And finally, I'm going to have common and elvish for my languages. And as you can see, selecting the various options utilizing the character wizard is very easy when it comes to the custom lineage option here. But we haven't really given a brief description. I haven't decided yet whether this is going to be a humanoid that is that looks human or whether they look elvish, whether they look orcish or a combination of all three of those races. That'll come when I actually have a completed character page and I begin to fill that information into the appearance section or into the note section. But I digress a little bit. Let's move on to the stats. So the next thing I want to do is either click next or click this stats button and I will be presented with a stats array. Now this is the standard stats array that uh, fifth edition provides to be able to set up your actual stats. But I prefer dice rolling them. And that's because you get a much wider variety of values that you can get returned. Some could be very high, some could be very low, so a lot can be very high, a lot can be very low. And it'll come down to the dungeon master to determine how many rolls you will get. For the purposes of this video though, I'm going to continue to roll until I have a relatively high intelligence, so I will return in just a moment. So I rolled a few times and managed to luck into this 18 here. And the, while the other stats are fairly average, I've got a decent wisdom and a decent dexterity, and I've already shifted everything around. For those of you who are unaware as to how to do that, all you have to do is click these little arrows here that appear below the numbers. Now, once you've got these values set the way that you want them, the stat that you selected that was going to gain the plus two improvement will have the total modification shown over here. So it will show you which stat will adjust that particular uh, ability. So in this case, I have a plus two to my intelligence, plus two plus 18 equals 20. None of the other stats are gonna change. But for an artificer, intelligence is actually the primary stat that you're gonna wanna go with here. A good constitution and a good dexterity is also a recommended selection for your stats. Now next, I'm going to either hit this next button, or in this case, I'm just gonna drop over to my class option, and you'll see that my feats is still selected here, and I wanna hold off on that for the time being. I'm gonna make sure that I choose my class. So in this case, I wanna select an artificer. And I want to go with uh, perception and investigation. Now, I hope you noticed something there. You will notice that there are a couple of options here that appear to duplicate, so be very, very careful of that. I'm not entirely certain why that is, but I have found that if you select the first instance of that particular um, skill, you're safe. I haven't had a crash when it came to the second one, but I've also had it where the second one didn't always appear as an active skill in my character sheet. So always make sure you choose the first of these two options. Okay, and that sets everything up for my class. And you will notice that our feats option here has disappeared. I'm not entirely certain why that happens, but it is something that you're gonna wanna be cognizant of. 
So I've gone ahead and looked at a few options that I would like to select as the feet for this particular character. Because this is going to be an Artificer class, the Gunner feet would definitely benefit the uh, Artillerist, if you will. And that might be an option that I decide to choose with. But at the same time, because this character gets the ability to cast spells, Metamagic Adept is one of those features that, that might come into play and, and provide better options. Shadow Touched could also work in the sense that it would increase one of your stats right off the start, and you gain an access to the invisibility spell right off, as well as uh, either an illusion or necromancy spell. And finally, telepathic could also be useful, uh, because it gives you the option to be able to communicate to anyone that you can see within 60 feet of you, essentially through thought. You don't have to worry about actually talking to them. And you can also cast the detect thought spell. Uh, without any components or anything like that. So in this particular case, any one of these will work. Now, all four of these do come from the supplement, the, the Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. But there are a few other supplements, or, yeah, sorry, feats, I should say, that do actually come through this, um, which might also apply. So Eldritch Adept, for example, that might come into play. It, you're not necessarily restricted to the feats that I've chosen, but for what I'm planning on doing, I'm figuring one of these four feats is the most applicable, and I think I'm gonna choose telepathic. I'm gonna whip out. So when I drop in telepathic, or select telepathic, I should say, so, dee, 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 dee. where is he here? Telepathic, there it is, boom. It doesn't allow me to do anything, so I'm gonna to have to set this aside for the moment, and leave it there until this character is created, and then I will go and modify one of these stats with the value that I want. So it hasn't actually gone through and increased anything. So now I can go ahead and move on to the background. In this case, I'm going to go with Sage, and I feel that's because the Sage background fits best with the Artificer, in my opinion. You can go with some of the other options. They all will work. I just like this one for this particular character. Now, as for the languages, which is always a bit tricky, I'm going to go with Giant and Goblin. Yeah. As an Artificer, you also gain the ability to cast spells. You will start off with two cantrips, and you will start off with a limited number of spells based on your intelligence bonus that you're going to gain. So you could... Oops. Uh, you, yep. Yeah, come on. Spells. There we go. Um, you could start off with one spell, you could start off with two spells, you could start off with, in this case I have five spells, because you get one starting spell from your first level, and then the rest come from your intelligence modifier. Now in this particular case, because I'm curious as to what this does, I'm going to choose green flame. Oh, come on, green flame, there we go. <laughs> and, let's see here. Let's go with Thunderclap for the cantrips. And then I'm going to select a first level spell. And you will see that all of the spells that I'm going to choose from all come from the Artificer section. And if you're curious about what spells you have, all you have to do is go to your Artificer class sheet here and click on Spellcasting, and it will allow you to open up the actual table where all of your spells will be coming from. So in this particular case, I'm going to take Cure Wounds. And you can see that there's a bit of a mix between the Divine as well as the Arcane. Let me go with Identify, Sanctuary. I'm kind of curious about this Caustic Brew. And is there anything here that will do a bit of damage? It's Catapult. Yeah, that'll do. I will take Catapult, and that uses up all of the available spell slots that I have. The last thing that I have to do is go set up my inventory. But before I get to that, I'm going to want to make sure that I have both my class sheet and my background sheets open. And the reason for that is they both define the equipment that this character will start off with. Right here is the starting equipment, and... Um, on the background sheet, this will be the starting equipment that we're looking for here. So let's go back to the inventory. 
let's start off with this. Now, the one thing that I'm going to point out here, and it might be because Tasha's didn't introduce the Artificer class, is that there is no option to get access to the weapons table, the armor table, etc., etc., from this particular class sheet. A workaround that I have found is actually fairly easy. Just open up your classes button here, and it doesn't matter which class you choose, just make sure it's from the player's handbook. Pop it open and then leave it open in the background so that you can see and gain access to these particular tables here. And the reason you're going to want that is that you'll need these for reference. So with that open, I find it fairly easy to just pop this table open and take a look at the category of weapon here. In this case, I can choose two simple weapons. That means that I can choose one or two items from this simple melee weapons table or one or two items from this simple ranged weapons table. But I'm already going to gain a light crossbow, so there's no point me selecting another crossbow from here. There's no point walking around with two. Well, I suppose if you lose one. But what I like to do is choose a couple of weapons from here and then take the crossbow from here. So I want a mace. And da, 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 da. let's go with the quarter staff in this particular case. And I might as well leave this open. I'm going to go with a light crossbow. And now the bolts, I find it's easier to find here. Because all you have to look, do is look for the word bolt and then just drag and drop that here. As nice as this is and as convenient as the ability is to search for it, it's still much easier to look at this table than it is to pull and select items here in my uh, in, in anything that I've run through so far. Um, okay, so leather armor. Now, this one's a bit tricky. Here, you will see that we have a relatively short list of armor. But, because we have Tasha's Cauldron of Everything loaded, if I type in uh, leather here, and then switch to, oops, or the armor tab, you'll see that there is a lot of armor that happens to be infused. Well, we don't really want to start with those. We want to be able to start with the studded leather, or in the case of scale mail, scale mail rather, start with the scale mail. So I find in that case, it would have just been easier for me to go plop, plop, rather than look through it and find it there. Um, and then we have do, 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 thieves tools and a dungeoneer's pack. I've never been able to find thieves tools here. I've always found thieves tools here under the kits. So I'm going to drag and drop that there. And then finally, the Dungeoneer's pack is going to be under Adventuring Gear. And that is down here. And that takes care of everything that we will be acquiring from the, uh, the class sheet. However, if you choose not to pre-fill your character with equipment, you will roll 5d4 times 10 uh, gold pieces, sorry. You will roll 5d4 die and multiply that result by 10. So let's move on to the background selection. So I still need a few things here. So let's go with ink. And a bottle of black ink, I generally choose this one. In relation to the quill, I will generally choose the ink pen and then rename it later once the character is created. I also need a knife, and that's just a small knife. It's not a weapon. It's essentially something that allows you to cut something up. And for the letter from a dead colleague, I like to use a scroll. Yep, scroll, not skull. And then I go back and rename that afterwards. Um, a set of common clothes. So let's go with clothes. <laughs> My typing is atrocious today, as it always seems to be when I record a video. Go figure. And then finally, a belt pouch. Now, you won't find a belt-related pouch, but you will find a pouch. And just drag and drop that into place, and then we will add the 10 gold pieces once the character sheet itself is created. At this point, you are essentially done. All you have to do is give the, char give the, uh, the, the character a name. In this case, I'm going to call it the Artificer. Artificer. Yes, sir. And everything is ready to go. Now, the good news is 
the character wizard will create your class sheet or your character sheet and it will set everything up appropriately including all of your oh my yeah okay all of your skill proficiencies it does link all your skills into place it links all your initial abilities into place and sets up your inventory it even goes through and sets up your starting spells from your selection now which i love and finally they have fixed that up so i'm going to get rid of that because I don't need that, but everything else is there and ready to go. However, before I end this video, I'm going to go through and just clean up my inventory a little bit here just to organize it. So this was the letter from a dead colleague. From Rushmore. I don't know. <laughs> and it's essentially posing a question. That is going to be inside my backpack. I'm going to be wearing those so they're worn. Um, crossbow bolts, we needed to get a quiver, so I'm just going to quickly pop. And I think it's adventuring gear here. Look for a quiver. And de -de -de -de. EQ quiver, so I'm going to drop that into my character sheet. And then my bolts will be inside of the quiver. And provided that is spelled right. Yep, that is spelled right. All right. Crowbar will be in my backpack. Backpack. Oops. Backpack. Backpack. And you'll see that a lot of these are just being stuffed into my backpack. This makes it easier to organize everything. And I'll explain why here in a moment. Um, backpack. Now, if you want to put it somewhere else, for example, over your back so that you're reaching over your shoulders to get the quiver, you have to let the keyword there pop up, continue to type out what you want, and then just hit the delete key to get the rest out of the way, and then move your up and down arrow key so that you don't accidentally create a new item uh, below here. So if I were to hit enter here, for example, it would create a new item. And I don't like it when it does that. That irritates me. All right, I'm going to set up the gold, platinum pieces, gold pieces, electrum pieces, silver pieces, and copper pieces. I've never actually used this last column. I don't know why. And we had 10 gold pieces. All right, so is there anything else? Oh, right, the pen is a quill. There. And that sets everything up for this particular character's inventory. And the reason why I have done that is if you go through a particular situation where you have to drop your backpack, all you have to do is click this icon here and all the items that are in it drop off your character, including the encumbrance that they were creating on your character. You pick it back up, you're now carrying it again, and you've now acquired all of that encumbrance back. This is useful because if you go through a situation where you've had to, had to squeeze through something tiny and you left your backpack behind and you dropped off that item onto the ground. You didn't go back to collect it. I now know as a dungeon master all of the items that are no longer in your inventory. And you as a character will remember what items are no longer in your inventory. It just makes things nice and convenient and adds a little bit of a role-playing aspect to things. So I always strongly encourage my players to make sure that their inventory is organized. Now, there are a couple of things that I haven't actually put a position on. It's assumed that the quarterstaff and the mace are going to be either carried or strapped on somewhere. Chances are your leather, leather armor is worn. Things like that. So there are certain things that you can make an easy assumption on. But for things that you're generally carrying, it's always useful to have it organized so that you know where it is when you've placed something down or if you've lost it. Things like that. The other thing that we have to do is modify one of our stats here. So it's either Intelligence, Wisdom, or Charisma. I'm actually going to take advantage of that and bring my Charisma up by one. That way, when if I decide through the leveling process to actually make use of my ability 
a score modifier, I might decide to bring that up and get rid of that negative modifier from that and bring it up to 11. That way I have pretty much no penalties when it comes to all of my saves. Okay, and I think that completes everything that we need to initially set up. In the next video, I will go through and set up any abilities that happen to be here if they require anything being added to the actions uh, tab here. If not, I will just simply start the process of leveling this character up and going through to determine how long that video actually is before I make the decision of potentially breaking it up into one or more parts. So I don't need any of these windows open anymore, although I might want to make sure that that got added to the abilities. Yes, it did. Perfect. As such, I hope you enjoyed this portion of the series, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video. I wish to thank you for taking the time to watch this particular video. I hope you found it informative and useful to familiarizing yourself with Fantasy Grounds in general, and that you had fun in the process. If you found the video useful and you liked the content of the particular video, go ahead and click that like button to let me know. And if you have any questions specific to the topic covered by this particular video, or just have some comments in general, please feel free to post something in the comments section. I will do my best to respond to any questions that are asked. Additionally, I do release content quite regularly, and it's generally specific to Fantasy Grounds or 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons at this time. So if you'd like to be notified when new videos come out, go ahead and subscribe and click the notification bell to ensure that notification is sent to you when I release a new video.